Hey, how's it going? What a wild week. I mean, I hope y'all are doing well, being safe out there. So one thing that I'm always shocked by is how many medical specialties are actually out there that no one knows about. It's insane. Like I'm actually in med school. It is my actual job to figure out what specialty I want to do and like research them and shadow people and be involved in the interest groups and everything. It's my job to find out what I want to do with my life as far as a specialty goes. But I feel like all we ever hear about as students are like the 10 big fish specialties. You know which ones I'm talking about? Like pediatrics, orthopedic surgery, internal medicine, family medicine, emergency medicine, cardiology, etc. And then I go and listen to podcasts and I hear about these super cool niches. And there's so many that literally you never hear about, at least in school. So I'm thinking if people knew about all of these and not just the main top 10, and they were like me and they're thinking like, oh, like a lot of these specialties are interesting but none of them like seems to just like fit me perfectly. They would be able to make more informed decisions about what they actually want to end up doing. There are enough subspecialties out there and niches to fit everyone's interests. And that's why in this video, we're going to talk about five awesome specialties that most people have never heard of. Be sure to watch to the end of this video for some awesome resources related to this video for all of you pre-meds and med students out there. Now, of course, if you are way ahead of the curve and you already know about or have experience in one or all of these fields, then please let people know about it because these are ones that aren't talked about a lot. So if you have anything to share about them, please do comment about it below. Now let's get rolling. So number one, did you know that from emergency medicine, you can do a ton of different fellowships to specialize in things like wilderness medicine or EMS administration or even aerospace medicine. Ah, so cool. I mean, doesn't that just sound cool for, I mean, off the bat, aerospace medicine, you're like, so I am actually really personally interested in this field, but I had no idea that it even existed until about two years ago. And most people I talk to about it are like, what? What kind of medicine? And I'm like, aerospace. And they're like, what? Is that real? And I'm like, yes, it's real. It, it is real. It's a thing. I'll read you the description of aerospace medicine from the Aerospace Med Association website. And it goes, aerospace medicine focuses on the clinical care research and operational support of the health, safety, and performance of crew members and passengers of air and space vehicles, together with the support personnel who assist operation of such vehicles. Pilots, think pilots. This population often works and lives in remote or extreme or enclosed environments under conditions of physical and psychological stress. So that is super different, very unique. To get into this, you can do a two year aerospace medicine fellowship after doing a residency. Now that residency doesn't necessarily have to be like emergency medicine because it sounds kind of like intense like that. No, you can do, basically it sounds like anything except pathology or radiology. Now, if you were like me and you're thinking like, okay, you work with pilots, what do you go even do as a specialist in aerospace medicine? Well, actually it's kind of cool because after doing some research, I found out that you can go work at a ton of different places in a ton of different capacities. You can go into travel medicine. You can go into operational me medicine, medicine, military medicine. You can work at NASA. You can work at the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, SpaceX or Virgin Galactic or Lockheed Martin. A lot of people are looking for medical consultants and it's not just space stuff. It's also basically anything that is high elevation, hypobaric or microgravity or hyper barrack under the sea. So it also includes stuff like maybe in the realm of dive medicine. Very, very interesting field. Not a lot of people have heard about it. And some people in the field even go on to become astronauts, which is absolutely wild. And the thing is you'd never hear about this one in med school, really. It's just a small field, you know? And so it doesn't get a lot of exposure with med students. So you kind of have to search this kind of thing out. That's why I'm doing one of these videos so that these fields can get a little bit more exposure. And so more people can know about them and be interested in them. And now for cool specialty, number two, which is 
micrographic surgery. Now you're like, what My surgery? Micro what? Micrographic. This is a dermatology subspecialty where you treat skin cancer in this really cool, special, precise way. You essentially remove individual layers of skin. Tiny layer by tiny layer, you go and examine each layer of tissue for cancer. So you're like getting a layer of skin, and you're like, all right, shave that. Now let's look at it. Is it all cancer? Okay, yeah, so we gotta cut a little more. Okay, cut more, look at it. Oh, still cancer. Okay, cut a little bit more. Oh, look, no more cancer. So you're basically doing this really precise surgical method. You're taking out all the cancer while leaving as much healthy tissue as you possibly can. How cool, right? Now, another name for this type of surgery in this specialty is also called Mohs, M-O-H, Mohs Micrographic Surgery. Now, to get into this, it's like a one to two year fellowship after dermatology residency. And since you're helping preserve as much healthy tissue as possible, that means better outcomes for patients, happier patients, happier docs, happier everyone. So it's super niche, super precise. This is a cool field, definitely cutting edge. I couldn't resist, I'm so sorry. That was so bad. I will never do that again, I promise. Okay, but it really is. Anyway, let's move on to number three. This next field is very interesting. It falls underneath the umbrella of radiology and imaging, and it's a three to four year residency straight out of medical school, actually. Now this one is called nuclear med isin. <laughs> Nuclear medicine. And you might be thinking like, oh, wow, nuclear medicine? Like, that sounds kind of sketch. Well, the name might itself, just nuclear, you know, maybe kind of gives it a weird vibe, but is actually really cool. I don't want to botch the description, so I'm going to read an official description. Here we go. So in nuclear medicine, you use molecular tracers, usually labeled with radioactive atoms, for diagnosis and therapy. These labeled tracers are off these labeled tracers are most often used to produce images that provide information about organ function as well as cellular function on a molecular level, aka molecular imaging. So that molecular imaging can be combined with anatomical imaging by using special cameras. The most common diagnostic applications of nuclear medicine include early detection of coronary artery disease, cancer diagnosis and staging, very important, and the evaluation of the effect of cancer treatment. The fusion of molecular and anatomical information increases diagnostic accuracy and changes medical management. Radioactive materials are also used to treat a variety of health problems, including thyroid disorder, di <laughs> thyroid disorders, <laughs> including thyroid disorders <laughs> and cancer, which might seem like counterintuitive. You're like, how are they using radiation to treat cancer? I thought cancer came from radiation. There are lots of different types of radiation. And if you want to know more, Google this nuclear medicine and see what else they do. Cause it's a huge topic that I'm not going to go into here. Just know you actually can use radiation to your advantage. And that's what nuclear medicine is. Very, very cool, right? If you like imaging and you like precise targeted therapies and using radiation as a force for good in the world, then this field of nuclear medicine might be for you. Cool specialty number four is sleep medicine. Everyone loves sleep, right? Like, find me one person who doesn't love to sleep, but some people love it so much that they go into, that's right, sleep medicine. Now this is 100% real. It is still considered relatively new, an emerging specialty. Very interesting. Tell me one time where you haven't had like trouble sleeping or you haven't had questions about, you know, sleep. What is even sleep quality? Why do we have to use a third of our day sleeping? And all these questions, there's a lot of research going on in sleep medicine. As much as we love sleep, there's a lot we still don't know about it. So after doing a residency in certain specialties, you know, let me read them off really quick so I don't miss any. Internal medicine, peds, pediatrics, neurology, psychology, family medicine, otolaryngology, aka like ear, nose, throat doctor, or anesthesiology. If you do any one of those residencies, you then have the option to do a one year fellowship after residency in sleep medicine. Cool, right? For a definition of this specialty, I found the uh, website for the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So I'm gonna read the description from there for this specialty so I don't mess it up. So here we go. With an estimated 70 million Americans suffering from some sort of sleep problem, there is an expected increase in demand for sleep physicians to work with these patients who face sleep disorders 
such as obstructive sleep apnea that can lead to increased risk of heart failure, diabetes, hypertension, and cancer if untreated. A sleep med doctor studies the normal mechanisms of sleep physiology and treats sleep disorders. Wow, like who knew? Sleep is a big deal. I think this is an awesome field. And if you have any experience in this one, I would love to hear about it because I haven't met a sleep medicine doctor yet. And now for cool specialty number five, final one. This one is really, 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 really dope. It's called surgical pathology. I know you're like, surgical what? It's a patho pathology. Yeah, surgical pathology. It's usually a one year fellowship after a pathology residency. Apparently there are a couple of different tracks. There's anatomical pathology and there's clinical pathology. So you can do either residency and then go and do a one year fellowship in surgical pathology. So listen to this, this is the description. It is the study of tissues removed from living patients during surgery to help diagnose a disease and determine a treatment plan. Often the surgical pathologist provides consultation services in a wide variety of organ systems and medical subspecialties. Okay, so after reading up on this one a little bit, here's an example of something, a scenario that could go on as a surgical pathologist. If you're kind of like, what does that description really mean? Like, how does that play out in real life? For example, if a patient with breast cancer that has to undergo surgery, the surgeon is there trying to resect, fancy word for take out, all of the cancerous tissue, right? Okay, straightforward. But sometimes you can't tell just by looking at a, at a piece of tissue if it's cancerous or not. So what's a surgeon to do? If you're the surgeon, you don't wanna just like call it good, be like, oh, I think I got all of the cancer. Like, no, that wouldn't be helpful in the long run. So the cancer would likely just come back pretty quickly after the surgery if the surgeon didn't get all the cancerous tissue out. Enter surgical pathologists. They come in, take a little of the area in question, and then they go and examine it. There are loads of different ways to examine tissue. We're not gonna dive into that here. If you're curious, feel free to comment. I'll show you some resources. The surgical pathologist goes, takes that sample, examines it, and finds out, oh, hey, this bit is cancerous, or hey, this bit is not, or it is cancerous here and here, but not here. So the surgical pathologist comes back and tells the surgeon, hey, there's still cancer here and here and here, but there's not cancer here or here. Cool. So now the surgeon can resect the areas that actually still have cancer. It's pretty cool that you get to be the person who's telling the surgeon, hey, there, 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 cut, cut, cut and here and here don't, like you kind of direct what the surgeon does. In some ways you're kind of like the surgeon's doctor, which is really cool. I mean, even though you don't get all the love and attention that surgeons usually do. So I've heard that you kind of have to like not have a big ego to go into surgical pathology for that reason. So we have aerospace, micrographic, Mohs surgery, nuclear, sleep, and surgical pathology. Five really awesome, but very under the radar medical specialties that not everyone knows about. Now this is not by any means a comprehensive list. There are a lot more where these came from. These are not the only five specialties that fly under the radar. And if you wanna explore some more, I'll put a link up here to a really awesome playlist that does deep dives into more specialties. And if there's a specialty that you wanna know more about, let me know in the comments so I can cover them in a future video. And then there's also the Careers in Medicine website. I think you have to have an account with them, but amazing resource for those that are interested in looking deeper into a wider variety of specialties. And I'll put that link in the description below. And while you're over there, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, please, and like the video if you found this helpful. Those are the best ways to get this information out there to help more pre-meds and med students. With that, thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll catch you next week.